compare public companies to private and say, well, this is what I'm worth because this is what the public companies are worth. They don't look at the revenue multiplier and just look at an EBITDA multiplier. They use only the historical number instead of looking into what the future numbers might be or the synergistic numbers for that much. Okay? And they forget to discount for the situation and they do use no terminal value. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand some of the errors that happen? All right, now let's talk about how can you specifically increase the value with financial? Yes, sir? Yes. Okay. In this model, we only do years one, two, three, four, five, right? And we present value those back, right? So you get no credit for years six to infinity. So in order to try and get some credit for an ongoing business, we sell the business right here, and it's a complicated formula, so I'm not going to go into it. But we sell the business, and then present value that lump sum, and that's called the terminal value. Does that make that's the way we capture the future future value. Uh, but beyond five years. Yes. Okay, you assume, yes. You okay. assume that the cash flow in year five is whatever the operating cash flow is plus the proceeds of selling the company. Okay. And then you just tell us. I love to have a banker here. You know, it's nice to have somebody internally to the group to help me explain this. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. No, that's exactly correct. That's exactly, and, and by the way, remember, you're not certified valuators when you finish here. The idea is, did you pick up any little factors that you didn't know before? It's the same. Those are the same numbers. So, so if we use uh, what is your cap rate, some people get confused because you can take your, how much equity you have, how much debt you have, and you can do a weighted cost of capital of the company, and that's kind of a hurdle rate for projects, capital projects. That's different than the discount rate, so sometimes they're interchanged and there's a confusion. So I've kind of switched to the discount rate because that's a little bit easier to understand. All right, now, ways to increase this value. Obviously, we can reduce company risk, okay? Those are 10 factors that uh, if you're, I'm going to send that on an email to you. Uh, increase, obviously, cash flow and your revenue. Now, shark teeth. Here's a company. That's its five years of growth. All right? If I took the average growth of this company, it's going at maybe 30, 40 percent, right? Where would an investor think about that company? Can you see that clear back there? Okay. Yeah, they're going to take here because they can't bet on the shark teeth. Because you haven't got a three year trend, you've got who knows? So if you have shark teeth in your business, you want to smooth them out as best you can. Now, if you're on a cash basis, you can do that by adjusting your payables. If you're not and you're on an accrual basis, then you want to try to adjust it by projects. Yes? Now, how do you define the, the period of time for shark teeth? Is that a year by year? Or is that yeah, that's year by year over five years. So really that company looks great growth-wise, oh. but you look at the shark teeth and nobody's going to bet on the growth so that's sitting there. They don't really care about month by month. So some months will no, because you can have seasonal, it's all right. Annual. All right. Now, so we want to remove shark teeth. And then in the second half, we're going to talk about systems, how to increase efficiency, how to increase productivity, and how to cultivate your customer base. So that's what's coming up in the second. Now, could everybody stand up? Please stand up. Okay, I found that after about an hour, that's all the brain can handle because I've learned that the brain can only handle as long as the butt can stand, and that's about 45 minutes to an hour. So we're at the first butt release plan. Now, what I'd like to, what I'd like to uh, have uh, input is what did you learn today from this little ver university section of how to increase your, uh, or what the valuation principles are? What did you learn? Yes, sir. So I gave you a couple examples where if they would have done it themselves, they would have lost their shirt. Remember the, the, the red, the uh, pink sheet company? Five million dollars cost them 25,000. Okay? That's a pretty good return. The divorce, 180 went to 630. So it's worth your money to go and find out what the range of values are. 
before you go negotiate a deal. Great. What else did you learn? What? Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Agreed. What else? Yes. We look at nine because we want to get management's perspective. We'll do our own statistical analysis of your history. So we'll have history, statistic, management, market numbers, five or six market numbers because you got the range and you can do EBITDA and revenue multipliers. And then you have an asset value that typically doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I'll talk to you about that. I'll talk to you about that. Okay. Okay. Who else picked up anything? Anybody on this side of the room? You know, huh? Future growth. future growth is important, right? And you should get some value of looking at your future. What else? I thought it was interesting that revenue is okay if you can explain why the EBITDA isn't going up. Correct. So most everybody does an EBITDA multiplier. If you're using your EBITDA to grow your company, the value could be zero from an EBITDA, but the revenue growth is awesome. Okay, what else? Yes, sir. Sell to the buyer. What's that? Sell to the buyer, meaning uh, sell the future to the buyer. How good are you negotiating depends on your knowledge. And I believe knowledge is power, okay? And if all you do is go online and pick up an EBITDA multiplier, you have no strength whatsoever. You don't even know how it's calculated. So knowledge is power, all right? Yes, sir. Statistics. Three years is a trend. Yeah, trend. You got to have a growth for three years to be considered a trend. Any others? Yes, sir. Uh, a lot like predicting a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I'm not sure how the hurricane prediction works in Florida, but uh, in valuation, I told you it's not an exact science. Well, that chart, it looks like a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Channel, this is the hurricane coming in. That's okay. This is great. I love the analogy. I've never had that, by the way. So that's pretty good. Come to Florida. I got a hurricane analogy. This is awesome. Yes, sir. I had Deloitte do a valuation for me 15 years ago. Yes. It was done by their most senior guy responsible for 2,200 auditors. And after that, he said, This is your valuation for now. How much do you want it to be? And I thought it was stupid. Now I understand that it was not stupid. So it does depend on how you look at it, and that's why I believe more numbers are way more powerful than just one number or an EBITDA multiplier. I've seen people leave millions of dollars on the table because they didn't want to pay a few thousand dollars to get a valuation. Okay? All right. Yeah, so in, in the discount factor, they actually take into account the economic conditions. Now, like in 9 and 10, we actually put an add-on because of the difficulty of the period. So it's up to the appraiser to look and see what, what's really happening in the economy. But the, if you look at the Treasury bond and so forth, that takes into account the economic conditions for the most part. Occasionally, it's really unusual, and we'll put in a, a, another factor.